So I'd like to bring up a couple things that uh, Thomas and Blanca both talked about. Uh, Thomas, uh, in his statement just before the last one, uh, talked about uh, two uh, children that defended themselves with a firearm, which was a handgun, not an assault weapon, which would not be banned or changed in any way. That could still be possible. Still going to be plenty of self-defense out there. We are not talking about every gun out there like they keep talking. They, they're talking about thousands of jobs that are going to be lost because of assault weapons solely. You're just telling me that you're going to lose all these jobs of people making handguns, rifles, shotguns, that all these jobs are going to disappear because assault weapons are going to be restricted to civilians, that there's not going to be military sales still. So let's bring up another point. Um, also, restricting these uh, assault weapons will make it easier for the police and FBI to patrol and watch for black markets that will pop up if they do. Uh, like my opponent said, these black markets will come up everywhere. Well, if the FBI doesn't have to watch every gun sale of an assault weapon, every large magazine uh, round sale, which they do currently, they, they do extensive research on this, that's why there's background checks through the FBI, um, they will then have so much more free time of not having to patrol these people, but actually looking for these black markets, uh, you know, working with these things. So. And then uh, Blanca again says that <coughs> we are violating the Second Amendment by uh, restricting um, assault weapon sales. I don't understand how that would be restricting your right to bear arms of a handgun, a shotgun, a rifle. I mean, if you need an assault weapon to take down a herd of deer, I mean, maybe. But no, I don't really see that possible. So um, also, um, uh, armor-piercing bullets, and uh, assault rifles are much more lethal to the cops. It's gonna be harder for them to fight assault rifle with assault rifle. If they're finding someone with a handgun, they're gonna obviously have the upper hand. Um, back to the nine, nine, uh, nine round clip uh, magazine, just like she had, uh, Blanca had said. You know, that one to two seconds, same thing. That, that's a difference right there. But that's not the only difference, think about it. So I have to have a magazine here, a magazine here. Okay, that's 18 bullets. All right, another one here. That's another one here. All right, so now I'm starting to weight myself down. All right, now I'm a lot more bulky. Now, it, you know, it, it's a lot more revealing than one large clip hidden. Or, you know, one magazine in there. All right. Um, they are also saying that, it, you know, we're not going to stop all deaths by banning assault weapons. That's, or assault weapons. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to decrease it. I mean, there's crazy people in the world. There's no way to stop crazy. There's always gonna be that. But we can help limit it and decrease it. We can try to patrol it, just like Australia has. And they've done a great job of it so far. I'll go into that in a second. Um, also, they brought up blunt weapons and knives um, being used more often than guns. Well, yeah, duh, you can go to the 99 cent store and buy a hammer. You can buy a knife from the 99 cent store. Does not take any license. You don't have to be a certain age. Of course, there's going to be more lethal, you know, attacks with those. So, like I said, jobs will not, I mean, there may be some reduction, but, I mean, if the companies change and evolve with the law, they don't have to lose jobs. They can start producing other types of weapons. So, let me talk a little bit about Australia and what they've done, because this is a good model of what we can do for the 2013. Um, so... Australia's semi-rifle ban. In 96, um, a disturbed Australian gunman uh, with two semi-automatic rifles killed 35 people, wounded 23. Shocked the scale of thousands in Australia. Um, the ban was retroactive, so the government also funded a mandatory buyback program for all such weapons, which we could fund. I mean, we would possibly have to do a small increase in tax, or uh, maybe even using these guns to sell back to the military, we could repurpose. So there's ways around it, but I mean, overall, paying a little bit more for a little safety world, I'm okay with. So nearly 700,000 weapons were bought back by them. Um, in the 18 years before the ban, Australians suffered 13 gun massacres, each with more than four victims. So 13 before, uh, causing a total of 102 deaths. Since the ban, zero mass shootings. Zero. There has not been a single massacre since then. Few Australians would deny their country is, safe, is safer today. So, 
I mean, why not make America that much safer and, you know, ban these assault weapons? Thank you.